to Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. What fresh spore of madness awaits us? Oh, it'll be good. It'll be good. I mean, uh, it'll probably involve an episode where we'll have to do the opposite. Opposite day! Yay! Yep. And also joining us today is Sappy. Here's my drawing. I made it from a crayon. It looks terrible. Help me. <laughs> Crayon drawings are nice. Yeah, but not this one. I, I can see the drawing. It looks really good. Booty, no, booty, it booty. doesn't. No, it doesn't. Also joining us is Terra. Keep those bug types away from me. That's my weakness. No, it's not. Yes, it is. My weakness is bug, ice, flying. Uh, I think I missed something. Oh, fire, fire. of course. <laughs> Acid. Shipping. <laughs> yeah. Yes, shipping too. That's why I always hide from Sweetie Bloom. Oh, wow. Well. But anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review the Miraculous Ladybug. Um, how did Silver mention it again? The Adventures of Cat Noir and what, what again? Miraculous Adventures of Ladybug and Cat Noir? Yeah, I guess because that sounds strange. I, I just mean, I, I just know them as the Miraculous Ladybug. Yeah. Huh. But anywho, yeah, we are going to review the Miraculous Ladybug Season 2, Episode 21. Uh, called Reversa. Uh, in this episode, angry over his perception that Marinette and Natalia, Nathan, Nat- 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 whatever, humiliated him. Fellow student Mark becomes Reverse. Sorry, Reversa, who is determined to get revenge. Ha 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 ha. So, anywho, this episode, this episode, we first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? What the frig? I mean, okay, it starts off innocent enough. I mean, you know, there's two highly effeminate young men who seem to be bonding, bonding, and bonding. And one of them is painfully shy. I, I, One of painfully, both of them are painfully shy. But then all of a sudden, whoops, we've got garbage dumpsters in space. <laughs> what? <laughs> Controlled by an app. What? You know what? I have to agree. I have to agree. That subplot came out of nowhere. And the French government have enough money to launch dumpsters in space? Oh, and then, and then, we solve this by stringing up Cat Noir like Christ on a cross with a blindfold. (laughs) What's the safe word? Because clearly it needs to be said. (laughs) Ladybug, what are you doing to me? Oh, yes, first impressions are great. <laughs> so, anyway, Sappy, what about you? I haven't gotten that far. I'm, like, nearing towards the end. But so far, within the 17 minutes of the 21 episode, 21 minute episode I'm on, I don't know how I feel. <laughs> I, I feel like... Like, the whole entire fight that made this begin, it's like, oh, God, you're gay for me? Now I'm angry. <laughs> I, I don't know what he was expecting. <laughs> oh, boys. Or, All right. I, I don't even know what this kid was expecting, but just... Uh, <sighs> and... <my> head. <laughs> what about you, Why do Tara? all these episodes start with, like, painful misunderstandings? Ain't that happened in all episodes where there's a misunderstanding between friends? Oh, I hate you, you hate me, and then there's a big angry butterfly coming at you and stuff. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Tara, what about you? I'm kind of on the same boat with Safi here. I mean, I, I, I got no <laughs> other words. Like, I'm just like, what? Okay, so this is how the story goes, and I have several questions, like, why is there a little tiny ladybug, and then it goes into the earring, and that's the means of transformation. Like, what? <laughs> oh, man, I-, I forgot that this is your... Okay, technically, this is not your first time watching the series, right? It is. It is? Yes. I thought you mentioned you said you watched another episode before this one? Oh, yes. So well, Welcome to our nightmare, Torterra. <laughs> it, it clearly is a nightmare. Now I don't know if like any jewelries, could, there could be ladybugs hiding in there or something. Oh, Twilight Sparkle's greatest fear. Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. We're just reliving the fear of Twilight. Oh, no. 
<laughs> well, I mean, bugs are my weakness. Like, mm. you know, you can't trust those bugs. Mm, true, 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 true. Uh, but anyway, as for me, this episode was... Hmm, how, how do I put this? If you would just have told the truth, none of this would have ever happened. Like, just go up to the person, talk to him, then it'll be good. But nah, you have to do cloak and daggers and misunderstandings. And then poor guy has to get akumatized and become an evil villain and stuff. I mean, well, I know this movie or this series is strange, but the more it goes on, the more it gets stranger. And to be honest, this is not even the strangest episode I've seen. There's more, and I love it. So anyway, if you guys at home are really interested in watching the show or the series, I highly recommend go pausing this now and go watch it. If not, join us in the insanity, because I know I will. <laughs> Can I pause? <laughs> no. I gave you an okay, assignment. I just got to the one part that Silver was talking about, and I admit, out of context... Yeah, that doesn't look right. <laughs> Woo! So anyway, um, pause here if you want to go watch it. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, there's a, there's a lot of yeah, <laughs> there's a lot. So anyway, um, we start off the episode with our hero. Um, well, not really our hero. Oh, kind of. Marinette just stumbles upon Mark. Hi, Mark. And Mark's drawing some awesome art about, uh, let's see, Queen Bee, Ladybug, and the artist guy. I forgot what his name is. And Marinette says, oh, wow, that looks really good. You have a lot of talent with drawing. You should really do something about it. Like, yeah, totally. Sorry. No, he's not the artist. He's a writer. Yeah, he looks at drawings from another friend. Yeah. So technically, this guy is a fanfic writer. Yeah, Mark is a fanfic writer. Mm-hmm. Much awesomeness. Much awesomeness. So, Marinette just tells Mark, Hey, uh, I have this creative class after school. I think you should totally join in and check us out. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. So, a few hours later... After school, we are we go to the hobby class, whatever art class it is, and we see that well, uh, Natalie, Natalian. How, how do you say that name, Silver? Nathaniel. Yeah, yes, Nathaniel. So Nathaniel says, um, "Drawing's awesome and whatnot," but I'm not hundred percent sure. And his teacher says, "Oh, keep up at it. I mean, you looks good, looks good." And Mark comes in and. Okay, sorry. Well, sorry. Can I interrupt just to comment on this cl this uh, art room? Okay, go ahead. This is a highly, highly idealized school because the budget they must have for this room is remarkable. <laughs> I mean, look at all this stuff. They've got spray paint galore and a wall that you can actually post graffiti on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, clo clothing garments, sewing garments, art tables. I mean... What the hey? My school would have given half the students just to get this budget. Most schools, they're like, oh, you wanna, you wanna have an after school program? Well, I hope you can come up with the funds. Sorry, we've gotta, we've gotta fund those jet fighters. <laughs> Wait, what? I thought it was football or baseball or, sorry, no, baseball's crap in high school. Um, basketball and football, that's what you guys do, right? Well, I'm thinking more in America, basically the entire education system has to do with the budget of one F-16 fighter. <laughs> Really? Yeah, the military spending way far outclasses our education in my eyes. Oh, wow. Okay. That sucks because I thought everything goes to sport because sports. Yeah. Well, sports is a big big deal because that gets you the school the money that they won't spend on the art programs. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yet, for some reason, we're supposed to cheer at games. I'm bitter. Can you tell? <laughs> Clearly. I, I don't know if you're bitter at the school system or at this episode. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, Mark comes in and the teacher is really friendly. He he says that um you're free to do whatever you like. Uh, we have this kid here who listens to music and write lyrics. We have another kid here who 
likes to do graffiti and uh, we got Natalia or Nathan, whatever his name is. Uh, he likes to draw fan art and it's fan art of Ladybug. And when Mark sees uh, the art, like, oh my God, you're the artist. Oh, you look so awesome. You look so awesome. Your artwork is so amazing. And Nate here says, oh, you, you like my work? You, you, you like the commission? You like a commission? I could use the money. No, they stare deep into each other's eyes and they're very close and you can see all the eyelashes <laughs> surrounding both their eyes and it's very, very tense scene. Yeah. And then you realize, oh my God, they're high school. Come on, what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, that is true. And in all honesty, Mark here is... How, how do I put it? Mark here is strangely effeminate. Like, uh, I think the word is androgynous. Is it, Silver? No, I'm, I'm getting a very strong yaoi vibe in this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm just wondering, like, why does Mark so... Why does Mark look so effeminate? Like, it's the style of the of the art in this in this show. It's That's it's all. not that. Like, no. Even if you look at uh, Adrian, he doesn't look this effeminate. Even Nat. Yeah, I agree. He's very eyelashy. Yeah. And look at that choker. And, you know, if I were to carry on with Mark's character design, like, there'll be no tomorrow. And, oh, God, no. You know what? Let's move on because Chloe's here. Woo! The real star of the show. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> you always got to get the, one of those characters in these kinds of shows, I guess, right? Yeah. We got DT and uh, Silver Spoon. Woo! Yeah. So Chloe comes in with an art project, and she, before she gets the chance to reveal it, um, uh, she gets called be? out. Yeah, and yeah, her art project is just a collage of herself. Oh wow, egotistic much? Yes. So yeah, she says like it was nothing. So yeah, uh, I'm out of here. You guys are loser. Yeah, so I'm out of here. And the teacher calls. Oh man, I, I, this is bothering me. Who is Pink Hair Girl? Because cool I, Pink Hair Girl. Let's just call her that. Yeah, cool, cool Pink Hair. Well, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Hang on, hang on. I'll, I'll find her name. But okay, this is this is. Ah, uh, I'm at war with myself on this thing. Okay. Because on the on the one hand, uh, it is true, you can't. If this is open to all, that means it's open to everyone. Even someone who can be a very uh, toxic presence. Mm -hmm. So it might feel good to chase her out, but that's not really the right thing to do. At the same time, uh, going back to the last episode of Ladybug we, we saw, the teachers always seem to discipline the good students, but never want to actually uh, hold Chloe to task. And the old school side of me is saying, look, that kid needs a harsh talking to and to learn some discipline and respect. You're not going to do that with this hands-off approach or punishing the good students for just trying for her mistakes. So this is a very backward system in my eyes. Well, I think part of that is because, like, Chloe's dad is supposed to be, like, the mayor of the city or something. It is. He is the mayor of the city. But even then... I wish that, you know, he raised her daughter a little better. <laughs> but here's the thing. What Silver brings up is kind of true because if you have a class that is open to all, then approve it. And the teacher here does kind of want Chloe to well participate in the class because if you have an art project that you want to share with us and get comments on, bring it in and we'll do our best to comment and guide because it's still in the end of the day it's still a school where you come here to learn and come here to advance but in chloe's case here i feel that she's just there to kind of show off and just get praise out of nothing you know what i mean it's one of those scenarios where look at me i'm popular kiss me stuff yay kisu kisu yeah <laughs> but, don't remind me <laughs> But at the same time, too, I, I I kind of get what Silver means. Like, the the the, the quote-unquote good students left her out of class, and that's not nice. Ah, well. And I found her name. Her name is Alexi. Alrighty, Alexi. Mm -hmm. Well, 
let's let's be honest. I'm I think back to Power Rangers where Bulk and Skull were supposed to be the bad. They were pretty tame villains. Oh, true. That. Or uh, bullies. But people liked seeing them get their comeuppance. People like seeing cruelty have consequence. True, and that's the nice balance that they discovered in Power Rangers earlier on. I think what uh, Linkara just posted a video out on his channel, um, retrospective of Power Rangers Samurai Storm, Samurai Steel, something like that. Ah, Ninja Steel. Ninja Steel. Yeah, Ninja Steel, something like that. Yeah, and he compared the bullies in that series with Buck and Skull where Buck and Skull is much better but the new uh, quote-unquote bullies are much more modern in tone go go watch it and it's it's a really fun watch <coughs> but yes uh, one one of the things that he mentioned is that uh, when Buck and Skull do something that they think is easy but in reality is hard they get their comeuppance for example uh, doing Kung Fu or Karate or whatnot and they make themselves look like fools and idiots. Not knowing that they... Oh, what you call this? Not knowing that it's really hard. But with them, we get to see a progression of, okay, we're the school bullies, but we are inspired by the Power Rangers to do good. And in the end, they become heroes, which is cool, which is a really awesome development. I'm not holding my breath on Chloe to make this uh, transition. <laughs> Well, no, I have future episodes for that. <laughs> oh, no. Dear God. I know what episodes he's talking about is the worst part. Worse? What do you mean by worse? Hmm? What do you mean by worse? There's no worse. Yeah, uh, there is. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, let's continue on. So, teacher lectures these students that, hey, you shouldn't be mad. At him. You shouldn't be mean to him and whatnot because... um. Chloe is probably Chloe got something awesome to show us and with this Mark gets self-conscious about the whatchamacallit this his work and runs out of class because he doesn't want to feel like a fool when he shows his fanfic and whatnot he runs out of his class closing his eyes bumping into the pillar which is way out there if you look at it how did he even bump into it? Anyone? No idea. Uh, I got that. <laughs> so anywho, um, Mark runs out, bumps into a pillar, and drops his book. Marinette chases after him and picks up the book. And he discovers, sorry, she discovers that it is uh, Le Journal de Ladybug, Mark uh, something. Yes, so um, if I do understand right, it says... The Journal of Ladybug. Wow. My French is terrible. <laughs> we. <Oui. laughs> you want to go to the toilet, Silva? Oh, my. <laughs> uh, but anywho, yes. Um, Lady, uh, sorry, Marinette discovers it, and instead of returning it to him, she brings it to the lady's bathroom and reads it. Like, what? What a creep are you? She got curious. <laughs> my goodness. Curiosity killed the bug? Oh. Uh Oh, yes, I'm sure a lot of the students in this school are, you know, curious. <laughs> oh, boy. But anywho, um, before reading it, Marinette feels bad that she shouldn't read it, but it's Ladybug, and I'm Ladybug, so this is quote-unquote my journal, so I should really read it, right? Yeah, right, logics! So she reads it, and she discovers that, hey, this um, is a fanfic about me and this character, and... Yeah, uh, I'm this, surprised this... she's not super creeped out by it, but hey, plot. <laughs> yeah, so she she likes it and decides to, you know what, I think Mark and Nate here should work together because Nate needs a writer and Mark here is a writer. So they work together well. Yay, logic, right? Yeah, so let's do this, let's do this. So let me hook them up. It'll be awesome. So... Uh, Marinette returns the diary to Mark and Mark asks, did you read the diary or the book? And Marinette says, yeah, but it's really good. I, I think you should really work with Nate about this because uh, you guys can do beautiful, beautiful art. Awesomeness. Yes, yes, yes. And Marinette comes up with a plan to say, you know what? How about this? Uh, why don't you erase your name 
and I'll arrange the whole meetup and meeting. If he doesn't like the book, he you you don't really need to be uh, embarrassed by it and whatnot. So yeah, like this is a good plan. This is a good plan. So let me do something. Let, let me do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's be awesome. It's be awesome. Marinette goes up to Nate and shows the diary and says that okay, Nate, this is a story from a friend. I want you to read it and tell me what you think. If you like it, I'll get. I'll, I'll arrange a meeting. I'll arrange a meetup. And Nate reads it and he enjoys it, thinking that is Ladybug's diary. Awesomeness. So of course, any fanboy would say like, "Yeah, I would love to. I would love to read the author of the book. Like it's Ladybug. Yeah." So he agrees, and they meet up at well, a place. I don't know what the place is called, the but fountain. yeah, the fountain near Marinette's place. So they meet up, and well, they see how things goes because Marinette thinks that it'll go smooth and awesome, and things will be great. And there'll be a blooming friendship, and I'll be involved with this, and much awesomeness. Yay! And then they can write fan fiction about me. <laughs> Yay! Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Depends on Marionette. Oh, God. <laughs> Marionette. <laughs> Anywho, uh, Nate goes and sees a red hooded person and thinking that this could be Ladybug. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna be Ladybug. And when, she di- when Nate discovers it's just Mark and like, oh, you think I'm a fool? You you think you want to make fun of me? Like you you you're a jerk. Yeah. Here's what I think about your fanfic. Yeah. I'm tearing out the pages. Yeah. I'm walking off. Yeah. That went that esc that escalated quickly. Like what? I know. Yeah. I I agree. Like what what the hell, man? Hormones. That's totally uncalled for. Hormones, guys. Hormones. But teenagers. <laughs> yeah. But. Um, with that happen, Marinette runs to the fountain, and Mark seems dejected, seems pouty face. Okay, I have to say, why does he, why does he look like a uh, girl? There's nothing wrong with it, but it just takes you out of it. Like, what? Anybody? Let people be who they are, Norman. Uh, Can't change who they are. It's their design. That's that's just it. Yeah. But I feel like there's there's no explaining of there's no okay. Believe it or not, there's a girl on girl relationship in the show. Not sure boy and boy. But why would they design Mark this way? It doesn't make sense. Like maybe it's something to do with the French. I, I think must have like told me something about it. Uh, but anywho, yeah, I do. I do not know and do not presume to to say, but it is noticeable. As is the fact that as these guys stare into one another, yeah, there is a a very strong uh, vibe of a relationship there. Yeah, well, you know what? Probably my stuff like will tell me all about it, and I'll be calm down, and things will be explained. But as for now, I am just scratching my head at the idea of. Why does Mark have those eyelashes? And why does he have pink pouty lips? Uh, anyway, carry. And meanwhile, there's Hawk, there's Hawk Moth, oh, yeah. who appears. I am he. I'm still here. I'm still a villain. No, I won't be attracted to flame. Keep it away from me. Keep it away. <laughs> yeah. Anywho, so Hawk Moth di- discovers the dread of a fanfic writer being dejected online. So. Uh, he sends a akumatized ladybug to make Mark evil. And with that, he agrees to the condition and wants to exact revenge on Marionette and Nate. And he has the power to rewrite a person's personality. And by that, I mean, if you are athletic, you will be clumsy and klutzy. And if you are Above the law, you'll, well, become a villain and whatnot. So, Marinette runs, yeah, Marinette runs away and transforms into Ladybug. With that really weird transformation sequence. Uh, Stop stretching. 
Well, Sailor Moon did so too, right? <sighs> Bugs. <laughs> uh, but anywho, let's see. Um, Nate, Mark here, or Reverser here, tries to hunt down Marionette and Nate just to exact his revenge. At the same time, too, um, tries to catch Ladybug and Cat Noir for their miraculous and so on. So while this is happening, we get to see Adrian um, going out of the car and transforming because he too is a superhero. Yay. Cat Noir, which I'm sorry that these costumes are still bugging me. I mean, the, yeah, the bell around his neck and the tight leather and we're going to get into stuff. I'm like, what the hey? But Silver, I mean, okay, here, here okay. I, I, I know that it bothers you to a point, but what about other superheroes? Why, why don't you feel that that's creepy or whatever it is? Because they're children, because they're... Norman. Peter Parker, age 15. <laughs> well, what Good bothers call. me is that uh, Cat Noir's driver, I don't know, he just looks like a giant gorilla to me, <laughs> dressed in a suit and everything. I don't know, that's just me, but he oh, kind of looks like bodyguard. one. Yeah, yeah his bodyguard. I, I kind of have to agree. Uh, you, you know, you're not the only one because... You know what? I'm not going to even say anything. I'm not going to even say anything. Well, I'll have plenty to say at the climax of this episode. So, yeah. so anywho, um, Reversa battles with Ladybug and decides that, hey, you know what? Since Ladybug is bothering me, let's try to do this. I will send out my um, paper airplane to make this one cyclist klutzy so that he will drown in the ocean or the river. Ladybug notices and saves him. And with that, uh, Ladybug is, well, influenced by Reverser's magic and changed Ladybug into a klutz. Now, she is helpless. Oh no. So before Reverser could take Ladybug's miraculous, Cat Noir saves her. And, well, it seems that, well, Cat Noir is not so lucky because he too gets um, reversed and becomes a scaredy cat. Oh no, can't say much. Can't say much because it's, it's kind of a one-note joke. You know, unfortunately, they both... Uh, Drown? They're both sort of stuck in this one oh. note. Oh, she's clumsy. Oh, he's scared. Clumsy, scared, clumsy, scared. And it, it, it works to undermine their efforts. But I can't say it's like great humor. I am harsh with this show, and I, I, I do understand. I just have mixed feelings on this show. <laughs> oh, you, you haven't seen awesome episodes yet, but still. Yeah, I mean, for now, this is one of those episodes where, yeah, poor characters. Like, it's funny. It's funny. I, I highly enjoy the funniness. But if, it's for now. Uh, well, let, let's carry on before we go to our conclusions. Reversal, trees, tr Reversal tries to find Nate uh, without any luck. But we see Nate is in the Louvre at the museum uh, looking for Alexi and wanting to talk to her. So, Reversa goes back to school because it's a logical place to look for Marionette and also Nate. But without any luck, they're not there. So, we get back to Ladybug and see that they are in a pickle. Cat Noir says that, you know what, I I'm not going to do this because it's too scary and I I'm a scary cat. Ladybug says, I'm klutzy, but I still have to do this. And oh god, stairs. Stairs. But at least... Oh, Silver Stream would be cheering for okay. you. <laughs> stairs! Yay! But at least um, this is the closest interaction that Cat Noir will be ever getting from uh, Ladybug, so yay. So I'm just going to skip a few things here and there. And yeah, we go to a protest where the mayor of France or the mayor of wherever this place is sent out... Of uh, Paris? Yeah, Paris. Sent out garbage to... Sp what? Yeah, I, I was complaining about the school's budget. Apparently Paris's budget is awesome because they can launch garbage into space and hold it in orbit. Why? Wow. How? In orbit. Why, why are you not just chucking it into the sun or send it out into the depths of space and alien culture will discover our refuse? Be like, oh, these are things are clearly highly advanced. 
Look at all the stuff they can throw away and not miss. Silver, silver, silver. If they throw it... We will conquer them. <laughs> silver, if they throw it into the sun, they might create Meteor Man. That might be interesting. <laughs> uh, that's Superman. Ladybug and Cat Noir versus Meteor Man. Uh, then Superman will have to deal with it. <laughs> uh, is it Meteor Man? I forgot what is his villain's name. Nuclear Man. Oh, this is from uh, that. Uh, yeah. Nuclear Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the quest for peace. <laughs> Uh, I guess the people of Earth really, really want it. <laughs> but I just... It, what? Where did this come from? I know. We're going to load up and launch dumpsters into space, but then make an orbit of them around the Earth. What? I, I have to agree. Like, this is just dumb. And now he controls it for... There's an app for that. I mean... There's an app for bleeding everything. Yeah, I mean, come on. Like, Apple says there's an app for everything, right? Uh, Apple's probably the ones who endorsed this program. We're going to make these dumpsters proprietary. <laughs> yep. And guess what? Reverser reverses the mayor. And the mayor says, you know what? I hate clean cities. Let's dump all the trash back to France, creating a crater of trash. Woo! Uh, okay. The stakes have been raised. So, yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be dirty. But anywho, um, our heroes go back to school trying to figure something out where Nate could be. And they figure that Nate is in the Louvre. So they go to the Louvre and, well, discover that uh, he is there. He is indeed there and they need their help. There's a news report where the mayor is playing with his iPad, trashing the planet. And, well, they, they need their help because Reversa wants... Nate and Lady Marinette to be there to exact his revenge and also for Ladybug and Cat Noir to give up their miraculous. Yeah. So they come up with a plan and the plan is not good. <laughs> the plan. The pl The first part of the plan is that they use a traffic cone as a megaphone. I can't even begin to dissect the physics of that. Cartoon logic. Yeah, because I don't think you could actually <laughs> use that as a megaphone. Cartoon. I mean, it would amplify your voice a little. Not Eiffel Tower levels, though. True, but here's the thing. SWAT teams are there. They they have the needs for a megaphone. Oh, well. But anywho, um, Marinette or Ladybug comes up with a plan to kind of save the day. And Cat Noir says, Me lady, I trust you, so whatever you do, it's gonna be all good. So, Ladybug does her mumbo jumbo miraculous Ladybug lucky charm thing and pops in a bunch of bamboos. And using her Sharin guns, she discovers that, okay, I need a traffic cone, I need Cat Noir's blanket, and I need my, um, Ladybug compass thingy and this bamboo to do something. Whatever that something is, I got no idea. So, Mer Ladybug come. Ladybug just executes the plan and tells Reverser that okay, uh, I am going to send in uh, Cat Noir and Nate up for the tower, and you have to well stop all this crap. So yeah. So, um, Net uh, Reverser agrees, and this is this next part here is going to be questionable. Questionable. That's a polite way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. Big emphasis on that. True. I, I mean, no, you asked why these costumes upset me because of situations like this. Like what? Like I, I, I don't get it. Like what? What's questionable? Oh. oh. A kid in leather with a belt over his eyes, holding a ladybug in his mouth, <laughs> kind of like a ball gag, and he's holding on to this kite. There's very much a need for a safe word. <laughs> but he, needs... he's basically strapped onto it. I mean, uh, come on. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. I mean, come on. You guys have dirty minds. You don't? You're sick. Oh, I'm s You're sick. I agree. 
I just, Norman, if you don't see a problem with this, I'm a little worried. <laughs> Maybe I'm just... If you're not the least bit concerned about this, Norman, then I have several questions for you, sir. Maybe I'm just trying to be oblivious to it. Woo! I can understand. I can understand not wanting to go to the dark place, but this is, I'm just, this is a kid's program? I guess so. This is a kid's pro. They used to criticize my, my childhood, but I'm, I'm a little worried for kids these days. Uh, but, oh, come on. Have you not played Nier Automata? Like, they have blindfold kids in there too. I have not played Nier what's something something. So, uh, I don't know. Too bad. It's a really good game. But anywho, yeah, oh, well, um, it seems that uh, this this your comment on a safe was is true, Silver, because Cat Noir uh, launches himself off of the Eiffel Tower without looking, and he's falling to his death. Oh no! Wait, he's using the Ninja Kite method, and with that, he tricks Reversal into. Well, uh, let's see. It doesn't really tricks, but he uses his Cataclysm to destroy. Uh, reverses kite glider thingy like in the goblin and now he's falling to his doom because Alexi and Ladybug pulled the rope out of him so he's falling to his doom yeah great job guys great job Woo. but you know that ain't true right because Ladybug used the lucky charm thingy to reset everything back to normal and uh, Cat Noir is Basically, back to his old, what you call this, old brief self again. And once again, the day is saved by our heroes. Yay. Although, here's something I don't get. the When the, the Lucky Charm uh, cleanses the, the evil voodoo, what, mm-hmm. what have you, it, it makes the garbage dumpsters disappear. <coughs> true, true. They're not co- they're not course corrected or sent back out to the space. They're gone. Or maybe they just made space for more garbage to go up there. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the the garbage satellite program will continue. But why would you even bother with that when apparently Ladybug could just make it go away? No comment, my friend. I'm still questioning. Ladybug, I I have some questionable government documents that need to uh, disappear. <laughs> Help a bro out. Well, I think yeah. you need Cat Noir for that. Cataclysm works well. But anywho, um, Ladybug talks to Nate and Mark and tells them, you guys look cute together. You should really hook up. And they kind of do. And yay, episode ends, I guess. <laughs> and not before Cat Noir and Ladybug says, pound it. Yeah, pounding it. They always say, they always say that. And I, I'm sorry, but this these scenarios... I kind of view this with a healthy mindset. It's just not possible. <laughs> yeah, so anywho, um, Nate and Mark created a comic and dedicated it to Marionette. And yay, it's much awesomeness. Like, um, things are good. Things are good. We see that uh, Nate and Mark are working together. And yay, misunderstandings are gone. Yep, with that episode ends. Woo! So, what do you guys think of said episode silver I think he's broken silver I step ju- out of it every time this thing justifies my my mind in in new ways there is one thing we didn't talk about however uh, the opening is this is season 2 mm-hmm. and i'm actually startled when you you said this is like episode 21 uh, kind of because the way that the show in, in the sorry, the way that the show is presented in English or in the US release it's topsy turvy because uh like, like I said it's topsy turvy like how some other shows are because uh there's an episode called Queen Style uh Style Queen part 1 and in between it you would think that it will be um Queen Style part 2 but oh no, they had to insert another show in between it. So the way that this show comes out is strange. Here's the thing. At the opening uh, credit sequence, at the very end, they show a rainbow array of mm-hmm. silhouettes. So a uh, colored background, black silhouette. 
It's easy to spot Ladybug, Cat Noir, and Hawk Moth, which is still just an adorable villain. <laughs> oh, you should hear the French original. Who then is the orange, yellow, green, and blue? Uh, Are there more miraculous heroes in this season? Uh, yeah, th- there is. There is. I've been. I may have watched ahead. <laughs> Because it's cool, but no, um, I I plan on revealing them to you guys slowly, but I never thought the intro would spoil it for you guys. So, mm. well, it hasn't, it hasn't spoiled. It's just oh, hinted. Yeah, still, but I was curious about that. But okay, this episode, I totally empathize with the the fear of rejection when you put forth your creative work. It's always that's always a risk, and. It's one of those things I'm not sure people understand unless you've tried it yourself. You you put a bit of yourself into that work. And if it's rejected, it hits on a very personal level. So that is empathetic. But they dial up the weirdness in this so far with garbage space uh, scows or whatever. Garbage bins in space. And then, the, the, and then this unique solution to the problem. Which is blindfolding Cat Noir and holding him like a kite, which like Starlight, even Starlight Glimmer is like, dang, you folks are into this. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my. Woo. And it's, it's the unique style of miraculous crazy. And it's actually, I, I have more fun overreacting to it than I might have with the episode true itself. That, true that. Uh, Makes sense. You know, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, I, I I can't defend this episode. I I can't defend the show. Whatever you take out of it, that's your views. But in all honesty, it's harmless. It's a lot of fun, and the show itself is a real blast to watch. It's it's the right kind of fun and crazy, where it's like I said, it's just fun and crazy. We we got a lot of other episodes that I'm sure Master of Leg would like us to review and he well sent me a few things to talk about in the future so yeah i like (laughs) it's hard for me to say you're wrong and i'm right because in this show the more you overreact the more fun it is i have a feeling i'll have ample opportunity for overreactions just i mean okay uh this is more to bring totara up to speed the first episode of the show i ever saw was a Christmas special. And I had I had no context going in, so the ladybug, uh, Tiki, she's <laughs> suddenly just popping up in your face. I'm like, oh my god, what is that? And uh, then then Cat Noir's Miraculous, who's his name, uh, Plague, he shows up. He's like, wait, what is this thing? Why is he transformed? Is that boy all in leather? What is he doing? And ever since then, it's been a nonstop barrage of what is that? What are they doing? Why are they doing this? What? 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 Oh boy! Yeah, same. Yeah, that's kind of my reaction. I mean, he ain't wrong. So I think you're killing Martin then, there. Hawk, hawk moth. Oh, everyone, run away from the wicked hawk moth! Hide your clothes; he might nip a little holes in them. Oh, run away from the hawk moth! Oh, hawk moth is coming! I think I did. I don't know anymore. I think I did mention to you, right, Silver, the original name uh, for hawk moth in French. Uh, you did, but I forgot. Uh, Papillon, which is butterfly. Happy what? Oh, look out for butterfly! (laughs) He's coming to get us the butterfly. Oh, I'm so scared of the butterfly. (sighs) <sighs> yeah, so... Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say that, Terra, what you get here is those of normal for the show. There is no normal. There is only miraculous. <laughs> so, okay. I actually ended up catching it like while we were at BabsCon, and it's like, why? Wait, what? You... I, I kept looking at, like, why, and then after it appeared on my TV for once, it's like, okay, fine, I'll give you a chance. And <laughs> actually, the episode I came in on was Style Queen. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Parts one and two. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Woo! That, that is another episode. Woo-hoo. All righty, then. Much fun, then. Well, the first, the first episode I encountered, I forget the name, but... Oh, man, I have several questions on what I witnessed. It's like, um, I don't remember the exact name, but there's basically a lot of little tiny creatures. And uh, I forget the, um, the main character's oh, name. Yeah, okay. Marinette? 
Yeah, I remember that. She's talking to, like, the megaphone or whatever, trying to get her friend to come out. She's like, hey, I need you so I can transform. And I see all these little things, like, what looks like a dream world. They stop, I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> oh, wow, okay. There is a lot of... I think I know... I did not see that. I think I know... I think it's Sandboy, then. Yeah. Uh, dreams and stuff. I, I guess. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Whatever. Whew. But anywho, yeah, um, this episode, uh, Seppi, what do you think about this episode? Well, I, I can't say I don't relate to the shy boy over there. I, I also kept thinking to myself WTF, but after watching a lot more episodes, like, on my own, without telling you guys, <laughs> it's like, yeah, so, this, okay, okay. this feels like Miraculous Ladybug, yeah, feels like a typical episode. When, when you say, um other episodes without telling us is it just style queen or did you watch more no, than that there was a lot more oh my goodness i am proud of you it, it takes me like actually thinking okay fine i'm bored let's watch you in order to get me into anything <laughs> uh soon she'll watch star I'd have wars to silver be really bored to give a new show a chance okay so what we have to do is get you into total sensory <laughs> deprivation with a Star Wars DVD on standby. And that will solve the problem. Okay, I'm going to encourage Manga Kamen to become the most boring person in the world. That's going to be hard. Well, he's online now if you really want to talk to him about it. <laughs> Later. <laughs> I just like it. He, he failed in his assignment. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> All right, then. Okay, so... yeah. When we were at the video rental store, they didn't have Star Wars, so... I doubt it. <laughs> Can't be much... One, the fact that there's still a video rental store is stunning. In Michigan, and yeah. Two, and two, they can't be very good if they don't have <laughs> Star Wars. Uh, well, they had everything else. They had Infinity War, they had Spider-Verse, but no Star Wars. No, none whatsoever. <laughs> No, 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 I'm sorry that they, they, they have failed. <laughs> There's, there is failure abounds. Well, well, go complain to family video then. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of family doesn't watch Star uh, Wars? You're not a family a at all. Star trek family? They oh, have a lot of Star Trek, they... yeah. Ah, conspiracy is revealed. <laughs> Star Trekking. Uh, but anywho, Tara, what about you? What, what, what do you think about this episode? I mean, I've mix like I still don't know what the heck was going on but I mean with these bad moths I forget the guy's name but with the bad moths and how they possess people then they she captures them like Ghostbusters style I guess and turns them good (laughs) what? it's a little Akuma okay whatever that is but yeah I mean this episode it was alright I guess I mean, I can't really say much because it's my second episode I saw. <laughs> All right. So wait, what what made you want to watch the first one? Like, wh- wh- why? Why? The first one I saw was like, because I eh. yeah, what Safi what Safi said. <laughs> so wait, you watch it on TV or YouTube? Well, I was just scrolling through the channel and I saw the ladybug. Oh. I'm like, oh okay, well, I guess yeah, I might as well check it out. Oh okay, okay, makes sense. <clears throat> All right. So, yeah, as for me, this episode, I like it. <laughs> it's doesn't sound like you like it. <laughs> Here's the thing, I, I, I like all of Ladybug's episodes, even the bad ones, because there's something to laugh about it. Or there's something to criticize, there's something to comment, and there's something to question. And knowing me and knowing how we run this show, the more strange the episode is, the more fun I will have. Example, this one. Somehow we get Seppi showing us a scene where Cat Noir is tied up to a kite with uh with Ladybug's compact in his mouth. What? I mean what? Yes! What? What were they thinking? That wouldn't be dirty. <laughs> but anywho. So yeah, I, I I kind of like this episode. I do okay. As for an episode itself, Norman, you sick. <laughs> As the episode itself, I do like uh, the fear of. I'm sorry, I do like the idea of facing your fears, getting your work out there, and getting it judged. And rejection is always one of those things where it feels bad whenever it happens, no matter 
in whatever project that you're doing, matter whether it be art, writing, drawing, podcasting, gaming, uh, if people say your work is bad or you're doing a bad job, it feels bad. It, it always feels bad. But in the end, it's what you do with that information. You could take it and cry about it or use it as inspiration to make yourself better. So with this one, I do like the ending where that bit of misunderstanding got patched up and those two are now working with each other to create an awesome comic. So it gives me hope that awesome things are going to happen if you just work at it. So that's my outtake on this episode. So yeah, I mean, maybe I'm just looking at it very positively, but yeah, I, like I said, I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, but anywho, with that, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's episode? Well, having watched uh, one a young man get uh, tied up and put in a dangerous situation, we will now watch a young griffin get tied to crystals in a silly situation. Oh. We'll go... We'll go back to My Little Pony and talk about Uprooted, the aftermath of the Tree of Harmony's destruction. There is a lot of questions to talk about this episode. How does the tree communicate with people? Ah. Well, they're not really people. Are you trying to say something, Silver? Sorry, are you trying to say something, Terra? What? what? <laughs> hmm. I've, tr- I've I've been saying just one thing this in- well I've been saying two things this entire review what and <laughs> yes sir and that's all that needs to be said. But you said more than two words now. <laughs> what? <laughs> but anywho, but anywho, been boy. <laughs> but anywho, yes. Next week we'll be reviewing season nine, episode three, uproot. That it's going to be a fun review. I can tell. I can tell. And fun fact: this will be episode. Overall episode 199. And you know what that means. Body over here. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Yeah, that, that we're, we've got something even weirder lined up for 200. Yeah, not going to say anything about that one. But episode 200 is going to be a fun one. You know what? I, I can't wait. Like, should we do a back-to-back or what? Like, what, what do you guys think? I, I don't know. Oh, you know what? I'm a little confused. Same here. But anywho, um, next week, that, that'll be next week's problem. But for, as for now, next week we'll be reviewing Uprooted and so on. But anywho, <coughs> if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thembsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? At a bar, trying to wash this from my mind. Really? It ain't that bad. Come on. Hey, you, you said you like it when I open <laughs> Uh you can, you can truly find me on Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. Also on DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. Do a search for After the Fact or Silver Quill on YouTube and I shall appear. And every Wednesday you can find me on Equestria Daily writing either a comic review or an editorial. Awesome, awesome. Go check it out. It'll be much fun to read. And Sappy, where can the good people find you? You can find me on DeviantArt, Twitter, and all things on the internet, maybe. I don't know. All under the name Anime Christy. You'll find me eventually. I trust ya. <laughs> Please right. find me. I need money. <laughs> Alrighty then, alright then. And Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, they can easily find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortera1324. And if the kind people do want to help me oh so much, they can donate some money to me on Patreon under the name Tortera1324. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date on Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PlentyVive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also Master of Leg. Thank you so much, guys. You are awesome. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia the Queen. I'm a shy artist, I guess. I am Torterra1324. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. You sick. Bye. Transform. 
So I was wondering, what would Cat Noir's safe word would be? Meow. Gibble. You sick? Uh, what about me, lady? Well, he says that all the time. We need to <laughs> for that. <laughs>